Hi, and uh, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and uh, Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campuses of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is part of uh, the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, which is a joint venture between Path Presenter and uh, the Digital Anatomic or Digital Pathology Association. Um, so our case today comes from the realm of classic bone pathology. Uh, this is a 14-year-old boy who's experienced rather intense pain near his knee. Uh, this pain is sometimes severe enough to wake him up at night um, and does not seem to be exercise related in any way. Uh, that leads to some radiographs, which we see here in a standard uh, AP and lateral plane film view. Uh, we can see that, uh, of course, his skeletal age is uh, still uh, immature. He's got open epiphyses um, and no uh, obvious masses uh, immediately evident on uh, the uh, bone films. The joint spaces appear adequately separated. Um, but as we uh, run down the cortices, we see here on the uh, AP view uh, an, an area of thickening with maybe a suggestion of a little bit of lucency here. Uh, and then looking here on the lateral, we can identify that right here, there is a lucency and maybe a very slight suggestion of central uh, hypercalcification to that as well. So this is obviously not a large lesion and the characteristic location within the cortex, uh, along with the history is strongly suggestive of an osteoid osteoma, uh, which in most cases, the radiologist would be able to make that diagnosis uh, without assistance from the pathologist. Uh, however, on occasion, uh, it's more challenging um, and uh, does bring up an interesting uh, differential. Uh, if we think about intracortical lesions, uh, many of the radiologists will use this uh, mnemonic of FOMOS, uh, fibrosarcoma, osteoid osteoma, metastatic disease, osteomyelitis or stress fracture. In a young patient, certainly osteomyelitis a uh, stress fracture could be considerations. Uh, obviously, osteoid osteoma also occurs in this uh, age group, but metastasis and fibrosarcoma would be much less frequent. Uh, in the uh, tibia, uh, certainly we'd want to think about the possibility of adamantinoma. Usually that's a little bit larger um, and a little bit more uh, bubbly, but can be intracortical. Uh, and fibrous cortical defects also can occur in this uh, location and age group. Under the microscope, we get a rare look at uh, this lesion, uh, which as you can see here, uh, forms an area of lucency. Uh, here's the normal bone out here. And then we see this slight uh, lucency around the uh, lesion with a central more cellular area. Over here, we just have some areas of incomplete ossification. Uh, we'll go down and take a look at this uh, lesion in the higher magnification. Um, as we can see here, uh, it's forming a lot of uh, matrix. Um, it's very vascular. Uh, and as we uh, hone in, we can also see there are numerous uh, giant cells scattered about. Uh, looking here, we see that this is uh, making osteoid and entrapped within the osteoid are um, osteocytes uh, corresponding to uh, this lesion making bone. So this is a bone forming lesion. And of course, uh, we would always consider the possibility of osteosarcoma. However, having looked at the radiograph, we recognize right away that this is not a malignant lesion. It does not have the characteristics radiographically of a malignancy. So even though we're looking here at bone forming matrix, uh, cellular uh, tissue, uh, with uh, entrapped osteocytes and maybe even a degree of uh, slight atypia. Uh, this is not osteosarcoma, although that might enter into our histologic differential diagnosis, uh, given that we're seeing bone production. Um, so on a high single high power field view, we might have difficulty distinguishing this from osteoblastoma or osteosarcoma, but having viewed the x-ray and correlated that experience uh, with the uh, clinical history, we can very firmly arrive at the diagnosis of osteoid osteoma. Now in this regard, I uh, refer you to this diagram which I've used before, uh, which highlights the locational uh, nature of lesions. 
Uh, note that in the uh, epiphysis, uh, there's really primarily one lesion, the chondroblastoma, which we highlighted on an earlier video. Uh, on the, in the metaphysis, we can have uh, chondrosarcomas and chondromas, osteochondromas, giant cell tumors, um, occasionally other lesions, bone cysts, and so forth. And occasionally these will cross over into the epiphysis, but uh, usually do not begin in the epiphysis. Uh, we also can have various other fibrous cortical defects, as noted here, uh, cortical fibrous dysplasia. And then as we move into the, the diaphysis, uh, we again see more of the more infiltrative lesions, uh, neoplastic-wise, and so forth. So just having an understanding of this rough differentiation of uh, location and differential diagnosis uh, makes uh, our job uh, a little bit easier. As you can see here, the lesions that can involve the cortex, fibrous dysplasia, osteoidosteoma, occasionally chondromyxoid fibroma, uh, osteochondromas, uh, usually morphologically uh, not a problem. Histologically, what we see with osteoidosteoma are a very lucent circumscribed border with calcification, sometimes some periosteal reaction, and these bony trabeculi with rimming osteoblasts and some giant cells. Histologically, we're thinking of osteoblastoma, osteosarcoma, maybe reactive bone, but usually this is a, a more clearly neoplastic type bone. And as noted, this is more frequent in young males. Um, the pain, interestingly, is very sensitive to non-steroidal agents, um, and this, again, usually is within the long bones, but many other bones can be affected from time to time. So uh, that firmly establishes our diagnosis. Uh, there are some other uh, immunohistochemical tools that have occasionally been used. Uh, I'll just uh, include here uh, some other things in the differential uh, that uh, might uh, come into your consideration. So here is a lesion uh, with some uh, bone matrix formation, uh, as we see here, um, and uh, entrapping these cells, um, and um, a few giant cells out here in the uh, uh, tissue. Uh, this is one example of a, an, an osteoblastoma, um, much larger lesion, usually several uh, centimeters in size uh, may be associated with pain on uh, certain occasions. And uh, another example here of osteoblastoma here showing some degree of permeation. Uh, and again, we've used this slide in uh, differential considerations in other uh, settings as well. So you may have seen this slide before uh, in one of my other videos. But again, a nice example of this very nice uh, classic bone forming matrix with some uh, vascularity, um, entrapped uh, osteocytes within the matrix. Um, again, indistinguishable at times from osteosarcoma um, unless you've seen the radiograph. Now, there are aggressive versions of uh, osteoblastoma, um, which may uh, elevate or damage the cortex, as we see happening here, uh, and even to a certain degree permeating that uh, cortex. So, uh, osteoblastoma is not. Uh, an entirely uh, benign disease may recur, may cause deformities, um, and hence uh, needs to be taken seriously in terms of uh, management. So with that, our final sign-out diagnosis on to get today's case is osteoid osteoma, and uh, I hope that that uh, will help you in your uh, differential considerations of uh, future cases. And uh, we appreciate your joining our uh, uh, discussion today. Please uh, uh, share your comments, uh, subscribe if you uh, uh, can so that you'll catch uh, future releases from our channel. And as always, uh, but don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me here directly. I appreciate those uh, feedback uh, so that we can uh, provide uh, uh, up-to-date information and uh, be sensitive to your needs as well, uh, helping us to guide uh, future uh, releases from our channel. As always, uh, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, uh, be good, make wise choices. And uh, uh, don't forget that uh, surgical pathology is a team sport.